Again, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual, aka the Big D to y'all. And as you can tell from that humming, this time around, I am going to review, you got it, Beauty and the Beast. As I continue a week of Disney. Now, for this review, I'm going to be reviewing, this is going to be a back-to-back -back review. I'm going to be reviewing both animated and live-action versions of the film. Now, it was 1991, and this would, when this came out, and this would be the third film in the Disney Renaissance period after Little Mermaid and the Rescuers Down Under. This was Disney's 30th animated motion picture. It's based on the French fairy tale of the same name, and ideas from the 1946 French film of the same name. Now, I'm sure a lot of y'all have seen this, so I will be talking a lot about this movie. But if you have not seen this movie, I'm going to give you five seconds to stop this video before I go on with this review. Well, actually, with these reviews. Whoops, sorry. Here's five seconds to stop. Okay, now then. Where was it? Oh, yes. Now, the... The film came out in November of 1991. Now, Disney had wanted to do Beauty and the Beast for some time during the 1930s and the 1950s. They tried many times and failed. But after The, the Little Mermaid was a success, they, did, they finally got the chance to do it. Well, the chairman at the time, Jeffrey Katzenberg, eventually dismissed the idea by Richard Purdom, well, to be a non-musical, but, but however, he wanted it, Katzenberg wanted it to be a musical, just like Little Mermaid was. Anyway, now, and... The music, of course, was composed by Alan Minken, who also did Little Mermaid's music, and also music for Disney's next anime feature, which was Aladdin. And the lyrics were done by Howard Ashman, who unfortunately died about six months before the film's release. And, well, actually, he co-wrote the songs with Minken. And, he, and Ashman additionally served as the film's executive producer. The film is dedicated to his memory. Now, well, anyway. Now, I'm pretty sure y'all are familiar with the movie story, so here we go. Now, of course, we start out by see, seeing shots of this prince here. Who apparently is well is cruel and selfish when he encounters a beggar woman at his door holding a single rose, but he banishes her, and soon this beggar woman isn't who she appears to be. She turns out to be an enchantress in disguise. Well, the prince tried to apologize to the enchantress, but was too late. His punishment for being so cruel and selfish, she transforms him into a hideous beast and, and puts a powerful spell on his castle and his servants, who become household objects. Well, she has cast a spell on the rose, and well, still in agony and what have you, learns that the rose would be finished in his 21st year. 
Now, if he could learn to love another and offer her love in return, by the time the last petal fell, then the spell would be broken. If not, he would be doomed to remain a beast for all times, as the narrative goes. So, years later, in a nearby village, we encounter our central protagonist, and probably a favorite of Disney princesses, to go alongside Ariel from Little Mermaid, and Snow White, Cinderella, Aurora from Sleeping Beauty, all them others, we encounter Belle. Voiced by Paige O'Hara, and I have to say, she's great as this character. So, she dreams of adventure and what have you. She loves to read a lot, and, well, the villagers break in the song along with her and sing about her, Belle. <laughs> Saying, one of the lines says, she is a funny girl, that Belle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. But I gotta admit, this, the music in this is just great. However, she does have the misfortune of encountering Hunter Gaston, who is this handsome and narcissistic conceited hunter, and his goofball of a sidekick, LeFou. Well... Apparently, Belle's going home to meet with her father, Maurice, who has created a wood chopping machine and plans to show it off. And as he leaves, something happens and he soon takes refuge in the castle where he meets two, well, the enchanted versions of two of his servants, Lumiere, voiced by Jerry Orbach, who of course would later be a big star on TV's Law and Order. Now, he is the valet of the beast. He's been transformed into a candlestick. But he has a habit of disobeying the master's rules. Pretty strict too, actually, in their strict rules. Causing tension between them. And Cogsworth, the, the head of the household staff and his Lumiere's best friend, he is turned into a clock. He's more loyal to be so as to save himself and anyone else in trouble, often leading to friction between himself and Lumiere. Oh boy. He gets to meet all a uh, few others, including Mrs. Potts, who is... The Beast's castle cook turned into a teapot. And she's voiced by Angela Lansbury, who of course was already a big star on TV's Murder, She Wrote at the time. And was also in Disney's movie Bedknobs and Broomsticks, which I will be reviewing this Friday. Look for it. And her son, Chip. Voiced by Bradley Pierce, and he's been turned to a teacup. But anyway, the beast comes and finds out everything and locks him up. And well, Belle's having Belle's starting to have problems of her own encountering Gaston because he wants Belle to be his wife, but she refuses. And well, soon uh, their horse Philippe comes back and takes her to the castle. Yes. She looks around, and Lumiere thinks Belle's come to break the spell. And so, the Beast is not too thrilled once he encounters her, and Belle insists that she take her dad's place. Beast says if she has to stay here forever. So... It happens and Maurice is taken back to the village. So, apparently, Beast tries to be a little nice, but he has trouble, though. Says that the castles are home now. Go anywhere she wants except the West Wing, which is forbidden. Yes, which is where he resides, the Beast. 
Once in our rooms, she meets several other, well, things. Well, one of them would have to be the wardrobe, voiced by funny gal Joanne Worley, who I mentioned in my review of the Shaggy DA back with the original Shaggy Dog yesterday. And, of course, she was best known for her work on Roy and Martin's Laugh-In. Lots of other shows. I'm going to say she's absolutely funny. So, she refuses to go have dinner with the Beast and really gets upset. Meanwhile, Gaston's upset. And soon we get into the neck to another song. The food breaks into excess. The song of Gaston, which is another good song. Oh boy. <laughs> Sometimes it makes me laugh at the at some of this song. I don't I don't mean to laugh at this, but I can't help it, okay people? I've watched Beauty and the Beast numerous times, the original anime movie. Enough said. So apparently after all that after that song's over, Maurice comes in and says everything, but Gaston thinks he's gone loony and what have you. So, they decide to do something. But anyway, after all that agony the Beast has gone through, he's nowhere to be seen. Belle comes to me, everyone, and and then she feels hungry and now they get ready to burst into song with the ever popular Be a guest, be a guest. <laughs> that song right there. Uh, Disney, please don't sue, okay? I just want some to have some fun here with everyone, thank you. <sighs> I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> but anyway, after all that, it was really fun for that. So, Cogsworth and Lumiere show Belle around the castle. But Belle kind of the, takes a, a turn for the worse and heads for the West Wing, much to the Beast's warning. And she knew, that, she knew that's where he was. They insisted that she goes to see other rooms like the library, but Bill kind of pulls a fast one, heads over, and sees a rose, and boy, Beast is really furious. And roars at her out. And as Bill's far away, she's encountered by a bunch of wolves, and they, they take at her and take attack, and want to have your Beast gets them, everything. After that, Belle manages to take care of the beast. And meanwhile, Gaston is meeting with this... Let me see here. The warden of an asylum for loons. Yeah, about Maurice. And soon Maurice is gone once Gaston and LeFou take their chance in finding them if they were still there. Should have, should Bell have returned as well? So, Gaston orders Lafu to stay until they return. And so, it's a snowy day. Bell's just enjoying being around the Philippe and, of course, the footstool, which is actually the castle's pet dog. Which, the name's not mentioned, but it's mentioned in the creds, Sultan. And boy, well, it's absolutely really good. Well, the Beast really wanted to be nice for real. So, Lumiere has suggestion, and why Bell to see some, close her eyes, and pull back the current, the, the currents, and what have you, and, and she looks, and there's a big library, a whole bunch of books. She was so thrilled. Yeah. So, and then later on, of course, we go into to some more stuff, and then we hear the next song. G oh, dear me, I'm trying to get through this here, people, okay?
Seven that seven must have not been there before. I think that's hit the song. That's the next song you hear. Good song. And soon they decide to fix Beast up for a little bit of a dance stage with Belle, and that's when Beauty and the Beast comes up. Real good. Well, later on after the dance. Belle feels unhappy that she misses her dad so much, so the Beast gives her the magic mirror he has to see what's going on. And she sees that Maurice is sick and may be dying, so Beast feels a bit of a kind of emotion coming through that she must go to him for his head and tells her that he, she's no longer his prisoner. But everyone else isn't too thrilled and what have you. Learn that he must learn to love another. So, unknown to everyone, Chip stows away with Dell, and soon Dell finds her dad out, and soon brings him back. Everything seems okay. Well, Chip's wondering why Dell ran away. It's like, don't you like us anymore? <laughs> but before she could explain. She encounters the warden, Rhea take him away, yeah, Maurice. Gaston, unknown to Belle, is up to something. We'll only let him go if, he, if Belle would marry him, she refuses. She says that her father is not lying, tells the mirror to show the beast, and says, I think you have feelings for this monster. And so, we burst into the next song, Kill the Beast. And soon, they are off. They lock Bill and Maurice in the in the basement. And off they go, with torches and pitchforks and all that chance they head back. Head up to the castle and everything. Chip manages to get the wood chopping machine going and crashes right into the basement. Boy, it's really funny. Soon, Cogsworth and Lumiere in see the Gaston and his crew ready to take some action. So with a big log in their hand, they charge and burst through the doors. <sighs> Mrs. Potts tells them, but Beast Swan just tells them to let them come. And so they take action and take on all of them. But Gaston gets through, takes out, tries to take out Beast with his arrows. Yeah. Terrible. Just terrible. But Beast manages to get him. And <sighs> it's about to take care of him. But he sees Bell. It's like, you came back. Yes. But Gaston stamps him with a knife and Beast swipes that. With the back of his paw, Gaston loses his bounce and, and plummets towards its death, I do believe, never to be seen again. That, do I ever have the Gaston? How should I say? No one knows, not even yours truly. And once he feels like he's dying, and Mel says that she loves him, and soon the last pill fell, and they fell like... They bombed, but suddenly something happened. Beams of light struck down, restoring the beast back into the prince. The castle was back to normal. Everyone was back to normal. Everything was really a wonderful, happily ever after, I tell you what. Now, would I recommend the original Beauty and the Beast? You better believe it. This is a Disney flick you should not miss out on. Boy, I'm about almost 20 minutes in this. This one's going to be a pretty big one. Now then, let's go on to this. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I almost forgot. Another thing is the music and what have you. Let me see. If I could just find it, but I guess I can't find it. I do know that there was a pop version of the Beauty and the Beast theme song, which was done by... Oh, here it is, right here. Yeah, the soundtrack, of course, was pretty big, and 
Yeah. Let me check. Okay. The the title track of this of Beauty and the Beast, the pop version, was done by R&B singer Peebo Bryson, along with French Canadian songbird Celine Dion. Yep. Now, I really think that was pretty good. And, well, that's about all I'm going to say about Beauty and the Beast. Also, it was the first anime feature to ever be nominated for Best Picture, but unfortunately, it lost. I don't know what to, though, because, well, <laughs> I didn't quite catch, don't really watch the Oscars, unfortunately. All right, now onward to the live action remake from 1970, uh, from 2017. Whoops, sorry, folks. My, I got carried. I got a little carried away with talking about the original. Cuckoo. <laughs> sorry, folks. Didn't mean to. I, I sometimes I can't help it if I get carried away. Anyway. <sighs> The film, the live-action film, was directed by Bill Condon, who, who also directed movies like Gods and Monsters, Dream Girls, and the final two installments of the Twilight series, which of course was Breaking Dawn. And he also wrote the screenplay for the movie version of the musical Chicago. Now then. It took some time to do this. Despite the film kind of got a little controversial, and even for me, I didn't think this was going to be good at all. As much as I kind of went down like a battle axe on the Jungle Book remake that came before this, and that then this came, I didn't think it was going to be as good as the original. But after having a better look at it, it proved I was wrong. So... The cast include Emma Watson, best known for playing Hermione Granger in the Harry Potter franchise, and will also be seeing her in the new adaptation of Little Women next month, playing Belle. Next would be Dan Stevens, who plays the Beast, Luke Evans as Gaston, Kevin Kline as Maurice, Josh Gad, who most of y'all know him, voiced Olaf in Frozen, and of course the more recent sequel, Frozen 2, as LeFou. Then there's Ewan McGregor as Lumiere, who actually was pretty good. As, and let's see, Audra McDonald as The Wardrobe. Let's see. Now, there was a uh, maid that was turned to a fair duster, but she didn't actually have a name, though, until um, in different incarnations of this, like the musical and what have you. Anyway, it's Plumette, and she's played by Gugu Mbatha-Ra. I think that's how you pronounce that. Uh, let's see. And it's also, she's also Lumiere's gal pal. And then there was some I thought I wouldn't be good. Despite I like David Ogden's years as Cogsworth in the original, I didn't think he would do too well because he had a deeper voice. But it proved me wrong. Sir Ian McKellen played Cogsworth, and I have to admit he was good after all. And as Mrs. Potts is Emma Thompson. Let's see. And, of course, as Chip is Nathan Mack. Well, and, of course, we did get one new member to this here story. Maestro Cadenza, played by Stanley Tucci. He was the court composer and the husband of Madame de Garderobe. Yeah, Garderobe. I think you know what that would possibly mean in Castle Top, but I ain't gonna bring that what that actually means. So, okay, folks, thank you. Yeah, and who was transformed into a harpsichord. Now, then, my friends, what did I like about the live action movie over the original anime one? Well, 
I will say that, that unlike maybe the more recent live action version of The Lion King, which I probably won't see, no hard feelings to everyone on the Magic World, Magical World of Disney group on Facebook, no hard feelings. But I kind of would like to relive this, and some, and I did actually. Uh, I did like the story. It came. It was actually close to being as good as the original. <coughs> Excuse me, everyone. Anyway, I do say that I agree with critics. They praise the performances of the cast, including most notably Miss Watson, Mr. Stevens, and its faithfulness to the original animated film. It also includes elements from the actual Broadway musical. So, anyway... This film was pretty well done, and I have to agree. The film has made a billion worldwide, become this, the highest grossing live action musical film, and it was the second highest grossing film of 2017, losing to Star Wars The Last Jedi. So... I'm just going to say that I really did like that one just as much. I will think of reliving again another day, but I do say that this was a pretty decent live action remake of Disney's. As much as I did come as down hard on the Jungle Book remake, I liked it as well, despite some of my criticisms with one of the casting and what have you. And the same thing goes for that new Lady in the Tramp remake. But I haven't seen because I don't have Disney+. Plus. But of course, some of y'all may or may not have been aware. Because I came extremely hard on the Aladdin remake from this past summer. And I don't think I want to see it. And I know I don't want to because I gave a rant on it. But I ain't going to give the rant to, the Dis to this Disney group I'm in. They'll... They'll be mad at me, so I and, and force me off. So I just want to say that I'm just wanting you all to understand that I'm not trying to be rude or anything. But even so, I think the live action Beauty and the Beast is real good. The story's just close to it. It's just as close to the original anime version. I like some of the well. Well, some of the new additions. Well, of course, most notably, um, Maestro Cadenza. That was a pretty good ca character. And I do love the portrayals of the characters and what have you. So, everything was good. The music's good as well. It just came close to as good as the originals as well. So... Would I recommend the live action Beauty and the Beast? Sure, go ahead, give it a try if you've not seen it, okay? If you like the anime one, you may just enjoy the anime uh, live action version. <sighs> Sorry, got carried away again. Forgive me, folks. But anyway, yeah, you'll enjoy the live action version too, just as much as the anime version. And this live action version proved me wrong. To go hard on it, so I do hope everybody understands. I come to like the live action Beauty and the Beast as well, so it was good. I mean, I know some people didn't kind of enjoy the out the look of the Beast, but still, it's factually good. So that way, I don't want to be rude to you Disney lovers out there. So anyway, tell me what you thought about Beauty and the Beast. Which did you prefer, the, the anime version or the live action version? Or do you like both of them? I like both of them, of course, for different reasons, though. So anyway, tell me what you thought about one or or both of these in the comments section. Like and subscribe to my channel and be a part of the Big D Nation! Join me tomorrow when I continue A Week of Disney, when I start off with the extremely underrated gem, Hot Lead and Cold Feet. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya!